Cyberdope from in here. So yeah, um, we've got the ROG Ally X, the Steam Deck OLED, and the Legion Go. And uh, collectively, I've put well over a thousand hours into these devices. I know them better than I know myself in some cases. Let me do my best to help you get an ideas for what you should maybe pull the trigger on if you're looking at buying a handheld. I have one rule, and that is I'm going to be honest with every word that I say. I'm going to be real about my experience with these devices. I don't want to sugarcoat anything. The first thing I want to talk about is something that I think is extremely important for you to understand, and that is convenience. Which handheld is the most convenient to play on? So here's the reality. The Legion Go and the ROG Ally X by default are running on Windows. They're full-blown computers, okay? Whereas the Steam Deck OLED, it feels like a console. So with Windows, you're gonna run into a lot of sleep issues. The sleep function doesn't work that well. I mean, you're gonna run into a lot of resolution issues. I have plenty of footage to back me up when I say that. Windows is not optimized for handhelds. Realistically, with my experience, more on the Legion Go than the ROG Ally, I find myself spending five to 10 minutes tweaking things to get it right before I play the game smoothly and enjoy it. Um, the Steam Deck is just, just press the power button, it instantly turns on from where you left off and you play your game and you're good to go. You have that full hour to play during your break. The next thing people want to know that's straight to the point is just what plays the most games the best? And number one on the list by far is the ROG Ally X. This thing can handle anything you throw at it. Without a doubt, there's not a single game that I'm playing right now where it is problematically slow. It's incredible. And now we have AM FMF, frame generation, where it literally, in some cases, doubles your frame rate on some of these games. And so performance really is not much of an issue with this handheld. You have a little bit better RAM than you do with the Legion Go, but at the end of the day, the Legion Go plays every game that the ROG Ally X plays. Um, then you have the Steam Deck OLED, and I mention this all the time. The Steam Deck OLED straight up is like a Honda Civic. It isn't the fastest car, but it goes on the highway just fine. You can play any game you want to play at a good 30 FPS if it's like a newer AAA game, um, but it's not the fastest handheld. It's the least powerful, but most stable. Another thing that's very important with these handhelds is software, which handheld has the best software. So number one by far is the Steam Deck OLED. Like I mentioned before, press A to play your game. It's lined up to you like a console. A four-year-old could know how to download Fortnite and play on it just fine. But the drawback is, unfortunately, you can't play Fortnite. And what I mean by that is, there are some games that you can't play on the Steam Deck OLED because it is running on Linux. And so a lot of the anti-cheat in some of the games don't work as well. But since I uploaded my last video, that was this exact same thing with the previous ally, which is six months, there have been drastic changes with the Steam Deck. It can play almost every single thing that it wasn't able to play back when I made my last video. So changes are being made and that is becoming less of an issue, but there are some games that you can't play on the Steam Deck OLED. But I think, for me personally, the best all-around software experience has got to be the ROG Ally X. Because you have your Armory Crate on Windows, and Armory Crate is, is incredible. I Honestly, I love Armory Crate. It's fast, it's responsive, it's straight to the point. Everything is lined up in front of you so well. And then on the flip side, you can install Bazai. You can install SteamOS onto this handheld so you have the Steam Deck experience and you have Armory Crate. And that is incredible because sometimes, you know, you want like frame generation on Windows or you want a lot of these like cool software features that you can't get on Linux. You can have that. But at the same time, if you really just want to have that traveling, that simple experience on the handheld, you can go back to SteamOS. You can dual boot between the two. I've been doing it since I've owned it. And there's no other way I would play a handheld than to have it dual booted with Linux and with Windows. It is an incredible experience and it trumps everything, it really does.
And then you've got the Legion Go. Legion Space comes by default with the Legion Go on Windows. And if I'm being honest here, it's cool. I like the vision. I see the vision. I, I know that I keep throwing the Legion Go down the dumpster when it comes to these like comparisons. Again, it's not that I don't favor the Legion Go or anything like that. It's just the reality is the competition is doing things a little bit better. But at the end of the day, it just feels like bloatware. You know, you open it up and there's a like huge delay. And finally, it's up and running and you're presented with this like game marketplace with all these weird. I, it just feels like in-app purchases. Pre it, I don't know. It just doesn't hit right. It's just bloaty. Say I want to put this thing into performance mode at 30 watts. I have to click on three separate things to get it to go to performance mode. Say I want to change the re resolution. I have to go out of this little setting, go down to here, and then click on this resolution. And then like every time I quit a game or go back into a game, it defaults back to its base resolution and the refresh rate. And it's just a mess if I'm being honest here. So best software is Steam Deck and the ROG Ally. Also, shout out to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. First up, we have the Ugreen Uno Charger 100 Watt. This little powerhouse has a cute robot design with a smart display showing emojis for charging status. It's not just cute, it's super powerful as well. It will charge your iPhone 16 to 57% in just 30 minutes. With three USB-C ports and one USB-A port, you can charge up to four devices at once. And yes, this will charge your handheld and give it its full 30 watt TDP. Plus, its GAN Affinity chip and thermal guard system ensure efficient and safe charging. Next, check out the Ugreen Uno 2-in-1 magnetic wireless charger. It's got the same groovy robot design with the smart status emojis. Um, but this G2 certified charger delivers 15 watt wireless magnetic charging for your iPhone 12 and above. And the best part, you can charge three devices simultaneously. So if you want your phone charge, your earphones, your watch, whatever it may be, both of these chargers bring a fun little twist to charging. Um, they're perfect accessories for your new iPhone and your handheld, offering both style and substance. Um, you can check out the link in the description for the full Ugreen Uno series including power banks, hubs, cables, and ah, they've got a lot more cool stuff. And the next thing is best display. So the cool thing about these three handhelds is they each have something that makes them shine in regards to the display. The Legion Go has an incredible high resolution display, 1600, and it looks so crisp, so clean, and it's giant, and it, it's so immersive when you play games. But the problem is you can't go that high. You know, you can't play games at that high resolution because it, it's too much processing power. You'll get those low frame rates and it's unplayable at that point. So you always have to like dumb it down to 800p or 900p, um, which is how I do it. And so you're not actually utilizing that high resolution, but then that screen size is priceless. And when I'm playing a game where I get immersed in the game, like Red Dead Redemption 2, or like a game where you just kind of want to get away from reality, the Legion Go screen by far is my favorite screen to play on because it's so massive. When you put on headphones, it's like a home theater. Then you have the Steam Deck OLED screen, which the resolution isn't high, but that's okay because it's running OLED and the high dynamic range is priceless to have. It really hurts going back to the ROG Ally X or the Legion Go after playing on the Steam Deck OLED because those OLED colors are just so cool. And it's just eye candy and dopamine. And then you've got the ROG Ally X. And I choose to play on the ROG Ally X screen only when I'm playing first person shooters. So Battlefield is big for me. I'm always choosing the ROG Ally X because it's got that variable refresh rate. So it feels very smooth and it's very responsive in comparison to the other handhelds. And so it really is just a matter of like, what games do you play? What do you want? And next thing is which one has the best battery? So I did a test on another video and these are the numbers exactly. And all these handouts were in performance mode. So 15 Watts and uh, No Man's Sky. They're running on No Man's Sky. The same brightness, same everything. The Legion Go had one hour and 26 minutes of battery life. The Steam Deck OLED had two hours and five minutes of battery life. 
and the ROG Ally X had 2 hours and 42 minutes of battery life. Numbers talk, most of us favor the larger battery. So again, the ROG Ally X is kind of the bee's knees for that topic as well. The other thing is super important as well, and this is best form factor, right? Traveling, or maybe you're going to work, you want to play on break, or there's a road trip. Which handheld is the best for being on the go? And, and this is funny because, you know, handhelds are meant to play on the go. The Legion Go, for me, is a homebody. It stays by the side of my bed, and I always play it before I go to sleep. Um, I've traveled with it. I've taken it across the country. I've taken it out of the country. It's kind of a hassle because, you know, it's like I'll put it in my suitcase. I won't put it in my backpack because it's not my go-to for, like, flights and stuff. And I still have to take off the controllers and store them in a different place so that I don't bend anything because the controllers are flimsy now. I've damaged them quite a bit. That's that's a me thing. Don't. Um, but... It's still portable, but it's not throw in your backpack and not worry about it portable. Um, because if you want to throw it in your backpack and not worry about it, you need to put a case on it. Because if you don't put a case on it, the controllers are going to get wobbly like mine do. Um, and if you do put a case on it, it takes up a lot of storage in your backpack um, because it's a big gnarly case. And so it really is kind of the hardest to travel with. Um, the next is the Steam Deck OLED. So I actually don't carry a case with me when I take it to different places, I just feel that I don't need to. And it fits in my backpack just fine. You forget it's there and it's super convenient. Um, but I think the ROG Ally X is kind of the winner for portability. A, because of battery life. But B, it's a very durable handheld, which I'll get to in a second. And so I don't need a case for it. And the case that I did buy, which is at Best Buy, is like this cool, thin, soft case. Um, sometimes I'll throw it in there, but this thing I can just throw around. It's a little bit smaller than the Steam Deck OLED. And it's a little bit more sturdy than the Steam Deck OLED. So I have like the less anxiety, the least amount of anxiety when taking this with me to places. And because of its durability, I don't second guess where I'm putting it and what I'm doing with it. Um, the next thing is again, durability. So I, I know that I keep throwing the Legion Go down the dumpster when it comes to these like comparisons. Again, it's not that I don't favor the Legion Go or anything like that. It's just the reality is the competition is doing things a little bit better. As far as durability goes, the Legion Go's last place. My controllers on the sides, you know, they're detachable, which is a really cool feature. I've used it three times. The problem is that they've become very wobbly. And granted, I'm not the safest with these handhelds, right? Like, I'm not taking care of them like I would a child or a puppy. But... Yeah, I mean, straight up, they, for the first, you know, seven months, they were doing really well, but now they've just kind of get, gotten loose, and I actually had it break apart. I had my, I think it was my right controller actually snapped off the Legion Go the other day, because I put it in my suitcase, and the pressure just kind of snapped it. It's not broken, but every time I put it on and off, it, it is super, super wobbly. And that's just not a problem that I'd have with any other handheld. And then the Steam Deck OLED and ROG Ally, they're not. I mean, they, they've handled everything fine. I have no problems with them. The next one is, which handheld is the most future-proof? So this is a big one because there's always new handhelds coming out. And so every time you purchase a handheld, in a couple of months from, from then, you're going to still feel that, oh, dang it, the new one just came out, or this new one came out, I should have waited. Um, that like guilt. Uh, don't feel that with these handhelds. It's just the way of the game. Um, there's always going to be something new. But if I had to pick one, I think the Steam Deck is probably the least buyer's remorse handheld that she can purchase right now because, you know, Valve, they're not like pushing out hardware. They're not making money off the hardware. They're making money off you buying games on Steam on their operating system and their platform. So they don't care about coming out with a new product every year. They care about making sure that the Steam Deck OLED plays games very well and that you have no problems playing everything. And so they come out with every hand, you know, so I think the next Steam Deck OLED handheld is going to be like a year, two years from now, probably. I'd be very surprised if they came out with something in 2025. The Legion Go, if you were to purchase one now, you might be bummed because they're already working on a Legion Go 2 um, and a Legion 
light. Um, there's already prototypes leaked and we've seen some of it. And so I think you're going to see an upgrade here pretty soon. So I might hold off if I were you, but number one is the ROG Ally X. Um, it's a newer device. And so we have a full year before they come out with anything new. Uh, but if I were in your shoes and this is like the first handheld to purchase, what I would do is I would actually buy the ROG Ally previous gen second hand for four, 300 bucks and then play on that because it's really the same thing as all these other handhelds. It's still got a Z1 Extreme chip, just a, a bad battery, that's it. And play on it and wait for the new Z2 chips to come out for these new handhelds, which is the beginning of next year. Um, that way you won't feel guilty for purchasing something because you purchase it for so cheap, plays everything just fine, and you now can justify purchasing a new one when the new Z2 chips come out. But the biggest thing is if I had to pick one handheld, what would it be? For me, straight up, it's the ROG LAX. Because, you know, if I want, say I like the Steam Deck and I love everything the Steam Deck has to offer, I can have the Steam Deck inside my ROG LAX with Bazai OS. The only thing I'm missing is an, an OLED screen. That's it. And then I want to play on Windows and I want to play with AM, FM, F and a bunch of these cool features and new updates. I can just hop on the Windows whenever I want. So I have the best of both worlds and I can, it's the most durable handheld. It's the best battery life in any handheld we have. It's just honestly, not to be biased or anything, it's just the best handheld on the market right now as far as bang for your buck goes. This thing is just incredible. I love it so much. I'm not paid to say that. I just mean it. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this. No. Also, side note, you don't have to sub if you don't want to. You know, if it's your vibe, it's your vibe, you do you. But tell me what I can do to make these videos better. Um, and also participate in the polls. I, I place votes on what you guys want to watch. And so if you vote, you know, you'll get your, you'll get what you want. So 